Um, my name's Michaela Bensley. I'm the Chief Executive of the SACE Board, and I'm delighted to be able to welcome you here today to celebrate the amazing achievement of the young people sitting next to us here. I'd like to start by acknowledging that we actually meet on the land of the Ghana people, and their connection to this land is as important today as it ever has been and always will be. Also further, the SACE Board and the SACE recognises Aboriginal people as the first educators in the country that we share together and that we offer our respect, not just through words, but through our deeds, with a commitment to work in allyship with Aboriginal people to recognise them as the cultural authority of their education practice. We also pay our deep respects to elders past, present, and hope we can play some small role in developing the leaders of the future. I'd also like to acknowledge that we are enjoying the beautiful surroundings of Government House, thanks to the generosity of Her Excellency, the Honourable Frances Adamson, Governor of South Australia. And we are grateful to be able to celebrate the 35th merit ceremony here today. Uh, just a few housekeeping before we get into the formal ceremony and celebrate these amazing young people here. Uh, in the unlikely event of an emergency and we need to evacuate, there's lots of people with red caps on. We'll follow them out calmly. Uh, if you're needing the bathrooms, they're just over here to your left and they're signposted. There's going to be official photography and photos for every recipient and the way to access those photos are in the inside of your merit booklet. Uh, there'll be time at the end of the ceremony to wander around the gardens and take your own photos. Um, and the actual ceremony is being recorded and you'll find that on our website next week. So distinguished guests, family, friends, and most importantly, the highest achieving students of class of 22, 2022, welcome to the SACE Merit Ceremony. This year, we're conducting six sessions over two days to recognize over 1,034 students who, through their hard work, persistence, resilience, have been able to collectively achieve over 1,277 merits across all of our subjects. This is an extraordinary effort, particularly when we realize that this cohort of students have experienced their entire SACE with the complexities of COVID. Everything from lockdowns to uh, online learning, hybrid ways of learning. You had sport cancelled, some of your social events cancelled. You were sometimes isolated from your friends and your support systems. And then last year was really challenging with your teachers when we're actually there was a lot of kind of um, teachers absent from school. So for you to be able to achieve what you have within of all of those complexities is really inspiring. So that doesn't happen just alone. We have to recognise that with the support of your families, your teachers and your other support systems, you've been able to demonstrate incredible resilience. Despite what has been happening around you, you've been focused and you've been able to achieve your own personal goals and also achieve excellence in your subject areas. And with the completion of the SACE, you've been able to open doors to your future, whatever that might look like. I'm really excited at the end of the ceremony to walk around, have conversations with you, and hear about what your dreams and aspirations are and to celebrate your success with your family. So to the young people that we're recognizing today, please take a moment to acknowledge how hard you've worked and what you've been able to achieve. And when life gets really hard and tricky, I want you to take a breath and remember how you were able to manage through this over the last three years, and that for you, the sky's the limit. Be bold, be brave, and think about the possibilities. So congratulations, you did it. And I'd like everyone to just join me in celebrating their success. <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce Safe Sports Health and Humanities Faculty Manager, Virginia Steele, who will introduce our guest speaker, who will hand out the merit certificates. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michaela, and again, a very warm welcome to everyone. I'm delighted to be here today to celebrate the extraordinary achievements of our SACE merit recipients. Each year, we invite a guest speaker to address our merit students, and it is my very great pleasure to introduce Yugane Sultanpur. Yagane is a 2022 winner of the Multicultural Youth Spirit of Resilience Award as part of Young Achiever Awards South Australia and is founder of Just Genius. She completed an honours degree in psychology 
is currently an MBA candidate at the University of Adelaide and is the newly appointed president of the Council of International Students Australia. Yagane is passionate about international education and at 19 set up Just Genius, a non-profit organization dedicated to supporting international students with services to assist them with developing their career in Australia. Services include both practical and well-being support to students from various backgrounds. Please give a warm welcome to Yagane Sultanpur. Hello, everyone. Um, I practiced the speech in my head a few times, but I think now that I see everyone, I've kind of panicked a little bit, <laughs> so sorry. But I kind of wanted to start by saying that um, there's never a time where you think that you go from being on the receiving end of a speech like this to being the one giving the speech. I think certainly when I graduated high school at 16, um, I was sitting in a similar ceremony. Yours is a lot cooler though, and a lot nicer. Perfect weather as well. Um, but. I don't really remember much of the speech particularly because I remember being a little bit panicked because the next day I had to submit my courses for what I wanted to actually study in university. Um, and I had a bit of an idea, but I wasn't fully certain. I remember it started out with, I want to be a vet. That didn't really work out, not too well at least. Um, and then I went with, you know what? I love psychology. Maybe I want to be a psychologist. Um, the maybe was a really big part on that. And I went ahead and I enrolled in psychology at the University of Adelaide. Mind you, at the time, I was an international student. Um, and being from the Middle East, it wasn't exactly the most um, heard of thing for your only child slash daughter to fly 11,000 kilometers across the world um, and study in a, universities over, uh, in a university overseas. Um, so I applied to the University of Adelaide, I got in, and then I informed my parents that I am in fact going. Um, they weren't very happy at the beginning, but I think eventually they kind of got used to it. But the point of this story entirely was um, when I first started psychology, it was something that I was sure that I wanted to do, and I went ahead and I did it. After finishing the bachelor's degree, I decided maybe clinical psychology wasn't for me, and I said, okay, maybe I'm gonna go ahead and do um, organizational psychology. I love helping people. Maybe I can help them in their careers or in their organizations. Um, yeah, that didn't work out either. I, after honors, I did have a placement, and I was like, oh, maybe this isn't something I wanna do for the rest of my life. And um, I applied to an MBA, and I remember sitting there, and I said, look, if by some miracle, I get into an MBA at 22 years old, it's meant to be. <laughs> like there is nothing other than fate that would get me to that point. Um, and I did, and I got into an MBA, and that is what I'm doing right now. And um, I did also particularly write this part because if I did have siblings, I think I would be the problem problematic child overseas. Um, not the favorite particularly, but I'm the only child, so my parents kind of have no choice but to love me. <laughs> but, um, you know, most of these decisions didn't just come out of the blue. Like, I didn't just one day decide, like, you know, I no longer want to be a psychologist. But I did have a counselor who I think I gave a lot, I think after I went to him multiple times, I saw him actually take painkillers every time I'd come in. He's like, she's gonna tell us she's gonna change degrees again. <laughs> they could, she, he, he could almost tell, he looked into my eyes like, oh no, what have you done again? But I remember he told me um, this quote that I'm sure most of you have heard, and it says, if you love what you do, then you don't have to work a day in your life. And um, my face changed a little bit, not because I didn't want to tell him that I've heard that quote so many times before this. And he kind of followed up with, oh, no, no, I don't mean you know, it in a bad way. And um, you're just kind of changing paths until you find the one for you. And I kind of remember replying with, like, um, that's not why I'm panicking. I'm panicking because I think what I love to do is consistently changing paths and learning new things. Because for me, it was about lifelong learning. It wasn't that I was no longer passionate about one thing or the other. It was about consistently 
finding ways to expand on what I already knew, but in a different field. For example, I found out very quickly that um, I love helping people excel in their careers. And I was like, okay, well, how can I do this that would um, obviously be helpful to individuals? And I set up Just Genius, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, and I started out by making CV templates, because I realized a lot of people maybe just don't know how to make one. And I would just make a lot of CV templates, and I would upload them to a free website at the time that I had made. Um, and then I started out with LinkedIn courses, what to do for LinkedIn, how to talk on there, what photos to take, and even like held like photography sessions for free, like for students, using my phone, obviously, um, but would edit them in a way that would make it look appropriate for them to up upload onto a website like LinkedIn. And then from there, I said, okay, so now I know that I love doing this, but I also know that I wanna help international students like myself um, kind of find their way when they first come to Australia. And I started volunteering in a lot of different spaces. Um, it started out statewide, so I worked a lot with Study Adelaide, um, which most of you will become very familiar with once you're in university, or if you choose to. But um, it started out with just basic volunteering, and from there I volunteered with the Council of International Students Australia. So to kind of give you a background, it is um, a kind of government body that looks after all of the international students in Australia nationally. And through there, I eventually somehow made my way up to president this year. So I'm, I'm still getting used to that part of it. I'm not entirely used to it. But it wasn't, um, for me, it wasn't really about finding something that I loved in its entirety. I noticed that there are times where you do something you love and there are parts of it that you absolutely hate. Um, or like, they're, like you always have to go through the tough bit to get to the part that you actually like. And for me, it was finding that one single moment that I actually enjoyed, that kind of made all the moments I didn't enjoy very much kind of just um, become merely insignificant. So like myself, I don't think we'll remember much of this speech. I think it's, <laughs> it's just in a few years' time down the line, very hard, unless you have like photographic memory, then kudos to you. But I do believe that every single thing that we hear and we see, even without realizing, will somehow place us on a particular path. Um, just like how that speech I heard when I was 16 probably set me on mine. I think even without realizing, that's how it happened. Um, and we don't really realize that that's the path we're on until we finally get there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yagani, for your inspiring address. We will now invite our merit scholars to the stage to receive their award from Yagane Sultanpur. As I read out the names, I ask that you reserve your applause until all students have been introduced. Giorgio Parhas, Research Project B. Isabella Parisi, Activating Identities and Futures. Charlotte Parks, Material Solutions. Michaela Partick, Research Project B. Sohana Pasula, Research Project B. Pari Patel, English. Trisha Patel, Auslan, Continuers. Lucy Patterson, Material Solutions. A.D. Patrick, English Literary Studies.
Luca Paul, Physics. Ruby Pierce, Activating Identities and Futures. Katja Pedizic, Activating Identities and Futures. Bianca Pei, English. Melissa Pelagio, Research Project A. Annalise Pell, English. Maria Pinino, Activating Identities and Futures. Paige Perkins, Food and Hospitality. Imogen Pertini, Ancient Studies, Integrated Learning A. Grace Petrus, Child Studies. Gabrielle Pham, Research Project B. Guan Tai Pham, English as an Additional Language, Physics. Eleanor Phillips, Research Project B. Daniel Piacredillo, Research Project B. Alana Picariello, Health and Wellbeing. Olivia Pike, Research Project A. Alana Pink Ovens, Research Project B. Anton Piotto, Modern History, Psychology. Georgia Pitkin, Research Project B. Alexandra Plunges, English, Outdoor Education. Charlotte Podger, Research Project B. Josep Podreka, English. Elena Pontifex, Economics. Emma Poole, Music Performance Ensemble. Angus Porter, English Literary Studies. Catherine Portalisi, General Mathematics. Esther Prince, Modern History. Alice Chin, Research Project B. Isabella Raffini, Society and Culture. Fardeen Rahman, Media Studies. Dwarakresh Rajaram, English Mathematics, Workplace Practices.
Kashavmitha Raja Kazarkaran, General Mathematics. Jai Ram Chandani, Research Project B. Alexandra Ram, Business Innovation. Zara Ramsey, Cross Disciplinary Studies. Agassi Rao, Mathematical Methods, Research Project B. George Raritan, Physics, Research Project B. Neha Ravindra, Biology. Emily Ross Ryan, Geography. Jack Rawson, English. Chelsea Ray, Activating Identities and Futures. Zoe Rains, Research Project B. Marnie Reese, Psychology. Ellie Richardson, Food and Hospitality. Vanessa Ricks, English. Emma Riddell, Research Project B. Elijah Rieger, Geography. Emily Rivet, Research Project B. Charlize Robbins, Research Project B. Tom Roberts, Research Project B. Jenna Robertson, Research Project B. Tess Roberts-Thompson, Research Project B. Isaac Rocker, Business Innovation, Physical Education. Phoebe Roger, English. Dakota Rowe, Activating Identities and Futures, Digital Communication Solutions. Amelia Rowett, Research Project B. Alyssa Russo, Psychology. Oscar Russo, Outdoor Education. Jack Ryan, Activating Identities and Futures. Lucas Saka, Modern History. Talia Samchia, Research Project B. Tamuna Sanderson Bromley, Aboriginal Studies. Kate 
Pete Santoro, General Mathematics. Josiah Santos, Research Project B. Charlotte Sare, Drama. Samuel Saris, Philosophy. Amelia Sartor, Research Project B. Daniela Sartor, Research Project B. Gurima Sutish, Research Project B. Olivia Scamoni, Physical Education. Caitlin Schaefer, Research Project B. Flynn Chappell, Research Project B. Claire Schiller, Research Project B. Oscar Schiller, Research Project B. Francesco Shimizi, English. Jessica Schultz, Physical Education. Meg Schwartz, Research Project B. Chiara Cyril, Physical Education. Zara Siegel, Research Project B. Mark Seneca, Modern History. Nathan Seward, Research Project B. Javin Bin Shah, Research Project B. Brianna Shannon, Research Project B. Masra Sharar, Mathematical Methods. Chelsea Shaw, English. Tom Shearing, Material Solutions. Daniel Shepherdson, English. Claudia Sherritt, Research Project B. Cindy Shirk, Chemistry. Nelson Shirk, Physics. Java Shippard, Child Studies. Natalie Short, Research Project B. Zoe Sibbins, General Mathematics. Jamie Seegers, English, Psychology.
Luke Signorello, Scientific Studies. Alicia Silvestri, Child Studies. Samuel Simpson, Industry and Entrepreneurial Solutions. William Siney, Activating Identities and Futures. Harzmirat Singh, Accounting. Jazz Karan Singh, Business Innovation. Parnika Singh, Research Project B. Gunin Singhal, Mathematical Methods. James Skelton, Music Performance Ensemble, Music Performance Solo. Chloe Sli, Drama. Olivia Shavak, Research Project B. Jacob Smith, Mathematical Methods. Lachlan Smith, English Literary Studies. Nicholas Smith, Physics. Sophie Smith, Research Project B. Zoe Smith, Psychology. Payam Sabharian, Biology, General Mathematics. Hayden Sparrow, Mathematical Methods. Jacinta Speranza, Religion Studies, Research Project B. Yana Stenirimov, Research Project B. Charlotte Starr, Food and Hospitality. Luke Stasinopoulos, Digital Communication Solutions. Bonita Stathopoulos, Research Project B. Alexandra Stavrou, Food and Hospitality, Psychology. Katie Story, Research Project B. Sarah Strybos, English, Workplace Practices. Maria Suarez, Research Project B. Holly Sullivan, Research Project B. Olivia Sutton, Drama. Shrey Patel, Research Project B. Kira Scott, Research Project B.
Please join me in congratulating all scholars who have received merit awards today. Please also join me in thanking our very special guest presenter, Yagane Soltempur. This concludes the official proceedings. On behalf of the SACE Board of South Australia, thank you for attending today's ceremony and for helping make this a very special celebration for young people who have achieved excellence in the SACE. Congratulations once again to all merit recipients. As you exit, please do enjoy the beautiful grounds of Government House to take photographs and capture this very special day. Thank you. <laughs>